Welcome back, everyone. Before heading into PGL, I want to have a word with Chachi and you. Congratulations, guys. What an awesome series. So, a few questions before diving into the game stuff. Duke, you have the final word on the draft, right? Okay, so Chachi, what do you want to say to Duke for letting Hecarim through after the draft? I mean, I don't think it was necessarily that bad because uh, uh, we had some picks into it, but uh, at the same time, may maybe it was a good ban since... Uh, uh, we didn't have that much practice into it, but I think it was fine. It went really well. Do you want to add something? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I think responsibility of the director uh, not being banned on the last game. I think if I had to change one thing out of all the four drafts, it would be this. Mm -hmm. And going on uh, off stage after the draft, it was the only one mistake afterwards that I said uh, maybe I should have banned Ikram. Uh, they, and they showed interesting things even from the very start of the game. I have a replay I want to see and we saw the caster talking about it during the game. It is the level one from you guys. Chachi, talk me through the communication here. It's behind you actually. Uh, yeah, basically we practiced a lot of level ones coming into this week and then this was one of the cheeses we discovered that could be good. Uh, and we knew that it's a flashless hacker him. Actually, he was covering like quite well at one point, but uh, since he doesn't have flash, it's very hard to escape this kind of gank. And I was just turning the team, my co the cooldown of my taunt, and when we go. Duke, what did you think about this level one? Um, I mean, we prepared a lot of level one because we saw how Fnatic um, made a big run, and we saw the difference that we have compared to a team like Fnatic is the preparation of the first level. So one of the key points that we focused on during the last two weeks were practicing a lot of level one um, with special training designed for level one. And we actually, we actually have way more strategy than this. And this is one of them of those that we identified were good against SK. Awesome, I'm looking forward to see more from you guys. Now, Chachi, did you expect the series to be so close? Because you had some issues in the early stages of the game. Um, to be fair, I expected us to take the series for sure. Mm -hmm. But uh, at the same time, it was much harder at, at, in the first two games than I thought. Like it went to 40, 45 minutes, which is very exhausting for a best of five series. And I could already feel it in the last game that uh, overall, as players, we were just lacking a bit in the focus. And also, like the delay didn't really help much. I think we just got out of the zone a bit and uh, we struggled to get back into it. Everybody's talking about Splice and the late game. It's actually becoming a meme now. Do you feel like you're trapped into this late game playstyle? Um, sometimes we draft for the late game, like in this game, for example, we had the Vayne, which is assuring us that we get the late game uh, done. But for example, in game three, we drafted a heavy uh, early mid game composition and we executed it quite well. So I think we can just play these styles. It's just we, we sometimes opt for the late game rather, and sometimes we mess up as well and it goes late game. And comfort style is good sometimes. Now, Duke, uh, we had a talk before the game and you said that you were kind of tired of Splice being called as the underdogs. So what would, should we call you guys? What is Splice now? I mean, we are just uh, a team that was expected to be top seven or eight according to the analyst pre uh, before the season. And now we are top four. So. Every game, apparently, it's a surprise for people watching our games. Um, I th would say we are just a contender and um, a challenger. And when we play, when we play against Fnatic, I think we have all our chances. I think today we, it was a pretty bad series. I think we, I expected to show way more, uh, looking at how the trainings went in the past two weeks. So I think we had a lot of uh, on-stage ner uh, nerve issues. And that's also why our, we tend to go late game. I think our mid game on stage uh, has been still pretty rough. But I'm confident that maybe after we got this game out of the way when we play against Fnatic, uh, we'll have a strong showing. It's interesting because w when you talk about the scrims, you say everything is going well. And then on stage you play, I wouldn't say poorly, but not great according to you. So what is different and how do you motivate your players to play better game uh, after game? I, I mean, during the regular season, we are not that hot in scrims, to be honest. Uh, like we had sometimes pretty rough week even like for example the, the week where we won against g2 uh we had a really rough week of scrims but during those two last week i think we had a super high win rate in scrims so we were super confident going into those those uh, uh coming into this match but yeah i think it was maybe a bit of nerves and uh but i'm confident that we can be way better in the mid game at least what is your take on this chachi yeah, I think we had really good results in scrims, but the problem is sometimes we just don't manage to replicate the same level of focus week by week, and then we drop back in uh, in level on stage as well. So this is what we need to fix coming into the Fnatic game. Agree, and you'll have a big challenge facing Fnatic here. How is it going to go? 
Uh, I don't think it's that big of a challenge as it looks. I honestly think we can take the series, so we will prepare going into the series with that mindset and we will take it. All right, and I'll be looking forward to this one. Gigi, once again, merci beaucoup, Duke. And to wrap up this week, let's send it back to Chucks for Post Game Lobby. Welcome everyone to the LEC post game lobby. I'm Shox, joined by Deficio and Kabi. Of course, after that epic best of five that went all the way to four games, we heard a lot from your coach already. He said maybe a bit nervous in game one. He thinks you actually didn't play as well as you had expected to play. What do you feel? Mm, I feel like in game one, we are usually just a slow starting team and we usually get better throughout the best of five series. And I'm not sure if it's nerves or we just need to get a bit warm and then we start playing better. But for sure, I think we didn't play too well in the first game. And I mean, generally, I'm happy, but we could have like game three was really good from us. And I would have liked to show that every game instead of going to 40 minutes <laughs> in some games. Yeah, game three was actually super clean. I this think was insane, by the way. But this was also crazy. Can you tell us about this, Kami? Well, this was really close. I actually thought I had flash here, but I didn't. So I got hit by some CC I shouldn't. And I'm really close to dying, but Chachi has a Really good channel here that just does it so I can the w. clean up the fight here. Can someone explain to me why when there's a vein in a game and in the beginning you always say, well, in team fights, if she's untouched, she's going to kill everybody. But as the enemy team, you know that as well. So why is it so hard to kill Kavi? Ulti makes it obviously hard to kill a Q you even makes have it hard. <laughs> No, but again, it's pretty hard to like instant target her unless you do catch her with early CC. Yeah. And also, you gotta keep in mind there's four other players on Splice. They're not even looking at the enemy. They're looking at Kobe. They're like, oh, where is he? Okay, I'm gonna stand right on top of him. I'm gonna have shields for him. You know, I'm gonna ult him with Shen. So you're not just dealing with him, you're actually dealing with four players protecting him. Yeah, the Fisher actually said during the game that he felt bad for you because SK was actually doing quite well at some point and it was all on you and he felt like it was an enormous responsibility put on you by the team, but I guess you feel comfortable in that role. I mean, I don't think so. And I played Vayne and I got two early kills and if we didn't screw up the early dive in bot lane, I think this game is just really easy for us. Um, but we messed up a bit and I feel like if I play Vayne and I get to those 30 minutes and get my items, it is my job, even if everyone else is trying to kill me, because that's what they should do. Mm -hmm. uh, you are a player of the series as well, with 71% of the votes. So I think in nice. your uh, cabinet, you now have all <laughs> nice. pro. AD Carry, as well as this player of the series, probably some players of the games, and uh, perhaps some other votes, which we don't know the um, results to. What are you hinting towards? Nothing. I'm just, you know, it's confusion. Mm. There's something that is... Coach of the split carpet. Congratulations, <laughs> you got it, mate. That's a curveball. Um, I do want to also button this up for SK Gaming because I think we should look at this two ways. In one way, they've shown great things this split in their inaugural split. I think they also really challenged Splice. But I do want to make that little caveat that in this game, the guy who we talked about, the entire split for me, really dropped the ball. I think Selfmade did not help his team at all in that last game specifically. And I think that's something they're going to have to reevaluate. Yeah, I think just looking at last game only, yeah, just last game. Um, that was extremely weird to watch. And if we're talking about you know, star players who can carry the team forward in playoffs, like Kobe did here with Splice. You were really looking at self-made in some of these final games, but it wasn't even the fact that he uh, didn't like solo carry the game, because you can't expect that from a jungler. It was more the fact that building IH on Rek'Sai in this important game, when actually you should just go on GA Sterex and just be a little bit of a tank, who still deals pretty decent damage. Probably actually the same damage as with IH, I feel, unless you get lucky crits. Those kind of things are just really weird. And then some of the plays he ended up making, I, it seemed like a little bit of tilt maybe just generally coming in. Hard to obviously be hard in the mind say, of, of the player, say. but I think there SK actually had decent chances with the way the game was going to win. Uh, they had double mountain, triple infernal. They got a bunch of early kills as well. I think there were ways for them to finish out that game. I'm not blaming it all on him, but I don't think he helped them actually win mm -hmm. that last game. Did you guys see that he bought the IE? Uh, did you guys talk about it in the comms? Mm, yeah, so I was like feeling he was getting behind and then we see a B of sort and they're like, okay, I guess he's going early GA. And then we see the pickaxe and then you see it's an infinity edge Rek'Sai. And then I'm a bit uh, scared, you know. For the one shot, <laughs> if he crits on you, it's over. Yeah, but if he doesn't, it's really useless. But uh, I'm not a Rek'Sai player, so uh, 
honestly don't. He died very quickly, Cop obviously. Out. But yeah. I think overall, SK in the last game had chances. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in the third game, when they were trying to stall, you guys were obviously pretty far ahead. We also got to see some rookie tendencies with them rushing for the Baron, uh, where I know if you just stall, you will lose inhib, you will probably lose a Baron, which really still sucks. But that's definitely a better way to try and get to full late game than rushing a Baron where you're guaranteed to die. Yeah, I agree. So I, I it's just some of those things where I think maybe next split, they would actually look better in this kind of best of five. Yeah, that's what I was going to get at. It's not that we... I don't think we should crucify any of these players no, for the not mistakes they made in their first playoffs. I think they still showed fantastic things, and they kept other teams out of the playoffs that have wanted to be here, and they pushed Splice. So we're going to be looking forward to summer for um, SK. But for Splice, this means that we've got our matchups for round two. Fnatic is going up against Splice in the first series, and then G2 is going up versus OG. Now, I'm having a bit of trouble with this because I know you guys hate me called the underdog all the time but uh i mean from our perspective it still feels that way because Fnatic played so well juke did or is chat she did say this is a series we can totally win we feel completely confident how do you feel kabi i mean i agree with that we can totally win um but obviously we're going to be the underdog since Fnatic went to world finals and now they're starting to look like a really strong team again mm -hmm. and it looked really convincing against vitality but at the same time i think vitality really played like uh, yeah, inside word. Um, <laughs> but uh, I think it's going to be a close series. Wait, I can definitely see us winning. Yeah, I have a, a memory, but I can't really grasp it, of a very close Fnatic Splice series of some years ago. I might be wrong. But um, you guys, we looked at the records before, and you guys, when you go to playoffs, you always end up pushing it to five games or very often against teams that end up in the final or sometimes even winning. So you haven't been very lucky. You haven't been very lucky in that regard with the route. But I do think that this could be one of those moments where you can finally shed all that stuff, you know? You don't have to be the underdog anymore. You don't have to be the third best team. If you win this, we have a whole new conversation of Splice. Um, you know, is that something you guys would want? I mean, yeah, even today we're, we really didn't want to lose because that would just prove everything right about what some people are saying about Splice. And I think this is the big one. Um, if we lose, you know, it's it's fine, but it's not fine because I'll be really sad. But <laughs> if, if we win that series, I think we can really go and make a name for ourselves and put yeah. yeah, then there's I, G2 Origin waiting, so... Uh, exactly, that's also the other game. I do find it interesting because there's many other teams that do worse than you that we talk better about. You know, maybe that is something we have to check ourselves for because Splice is consistently showing up in play. Don't look at me, I'm not on the broadcast. Anymore! <laughs> <laughs> You're actually always a Splice fan. <laughs> I yeah, think. I used to cheer for the Splice a lot and, yeah. and predict you to, to win series. Now, obviously, it would be kind of weird if I did. <laughs> to be fair, though, I wouldn't mind them beating Fnatic. You know, I'll take that. Because uh, then you don't have to take what, out what Fnatic. Do you mean by that? Well, I mean, it would be great to not... Well, <laughs> no, I don't mean anything. Just, just win. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, so what do you think about that matchup uh, now you've seen? I also want to say that I don't think this was the best Splice. Like, I've seen you guys play better throughout the split than today, maybe, uh, outside of Game 3. So if the best Splice shows up and the best Fnatic shows up, Deficio, what do we got? I mean, if it's, let's say, peak both teams, I would probably give it to Fnatic. Um, I like, though, that Splice are showing more creative, dra creative drafts. A um, lot of flex picking coming around. The Velcros as well, which was a big surprise, yeah. I think. Um, that really made it difficult for, for SK in that game, because they're like, OK, we're getting pushed in top with Jays, and then there's a Velcros bot lane, like with Tom Kench. What exactly are they going to do here to not fall really far behind? I think those kind of things are always super interesting in, in these uh, best of fives. Duke is talking about a million level one strategies. Like, there's a lot of things that can very quickly swing a game in favor of them. And when you guys played Fnatic in the last game of the regular season, it was quite a stomp, but it was a level two gank bot lane that gave two kills over to a vein. Yeah. Uh, and that obviously kind of ruined the entire early game. The same thing happened for us against Fnatic, also completely ruined the early game. So <laughs> if you remove that part, you might get a much closer game there. And then suddenly people start believing more that Spice can actually challenge Fnatic. But pe people look at that one game and say it was a stomp. Therefore, Fnatic heavy favorites. Do you think uh, that is true that you have like, do you feel like you have a lot more in your toolbox, a lot more strategies coming into this year? Mm. I would say uh, some of these different strategies and potential weird picks I've had for a long time. Just didn't really have the right situation to pull them out. Um, but as a team, we've been looking at a lot of other teams in LEC and even other regions, and we just figured that we need to be more creative and like both in draft, draft and gameplay, because we can't just play two standard and two by the book all the time. 
So that's where I think we're really evolving right now. Okay. Which I, will make us stronger in the best of five. Uh, I definitely think so. I'm sorry, but I just got the confirmation from production. You actually never played Fnatic in playoffs, so I don't know a G2 if I just game. made that up or something. Is the 3-2 against yes, G2 where that G was it. everyone predicted G2 was so like 3-0? that makes it even more exciting, actually. Uh, that also means we get the Reckless versus Kabi in the best of five. And I only bring it up because I don't know if you saw PGL yesterday. Uh, I saw some of it, but then I didn't watch after. Yeah, I get that, dude. It's long. But anyway, um, uh, we asked Reckless about the All-Pro, and I asked them who they voted for, and Reckless actually said that he didn't vote for you because he thinks that he is one of the only players that matches up against you better, mostly in lane then, I believe that is. But what do you think about that, and how do you look at that matchup? I mean, I guess yes, his reasons. Um, I think when you vote, you shouldn't look at your, like, by the way he voted, it was only by the two games he had against us and not by an overall thing. So, in a way, I understand it, but it's still kind of weird. Um, you think they should look at like the general performance? I mean, that, maybe that's just me. I didn't vote for him either because I didn't think he performed that well this split compared to what you expect from uh, Reckless. Mm -hmm. And I think he's playing much better now. And there's obviously not much bad you can say about him, right? No, no, absolutely not. Um, yeah. Okay. Sadly, when AD carries are having these small like 1v1 things, Yeah. You can always just say it's the support. <laughs> this guy over here, man. Support. Whoa. I mean, what can I do? Well, I'm definitely looking forward to that matchup. Um, and then there's G2 OG. We've talked about it a lot already. But Kabi, who do you think is going to win? G2 or OG? Mm, I would say it's going to be at least four or five games. And I would give the advantage to G2. Um, but I'm really not sure. I, I really think it can go both ways. But I would say G2 just by gut feeling. Yeah. I think uh, that's the total expectation. I think you can also agree with that expectation, at least, if you show. I mean, Jiju, they got first place in regular season, right? Yeah. Uh, so I assume based on that, the, <laughs> they have to be favorites. But I'm all in on the OG hype train. I mean, you have to be. They're paying you. Like, you can. It would be not. very weird if, yeah, if I was jumping on the G2 one. Um, also, what's very interesting is, of course, uh, G2 and OG will be in Rotterdam no matter what, because whoever loses that will be in the semifinal against the winner of Fnatic versus Splice on the 13th and 14th of April. You can get your tickets at eu.lolesports.com slash Rotterdam. And if you need more convincing, there will be all kind of actions and activations um, outside of the game. Mm -hmm. For instance, Xpeke and Fisher will be there signing whatever you want. Both days. Both days. From 12 o'clock. So I don't know if you need more reason to buy tickets and, and to come and watch the games. Well, so. if you do buy a ticket to come get a picture with us, please don't leave after. Actually go into the venue yeah, and watch the, the games. Watch don't just buy a ticket for yeah, us. That would be watch. weird. And also important, the LEC Spring Champions will then represent Europe at the Mid-Season Invitational, this year being held in Vietnam and Chinese Taipei between the 1st and the 19th of May. So so we'll see as well. Of course, we always forget that, but it's a trophy. And then the real work mm -hmm. after that internationally also starts. So um, time for a bit of fun. Kabi, we actually also invited Xerxi up, but I think he was feeling a bit tired after all the games. Okay. But we wanted to take a look at his tweets and more specifically his um, paintings after games. Can you explain to us what he does and why he does it? Um, I'm actually not sure because I don't, I never see it when he's drawing because he usually does it on off day and He's telling me he's spending like hours and hours on these paintings, so <laughs> I'm not really sure how he does so it. So here we go. <laughs> mm, let's see. So this is Splice versus Schalke. That's him playing Sejuani for sure. Yeah, there's an Aatrox for sure. This looks like an old one. This is not as good as what he's drawing now. Oh, he's, he's gotten better? The artist has evolved? Yeah, like okay. he's drawing much better. All right, I don't know. Do we have another one production to uh, show us? No, this is it. So, unfortunately <laughs> for you, Kabi, um, we were going to ask Xerxi to draw the result of this game. So you have to take his place. Are you down? Um, Fisher will help you. I guess I can I try, guess. but yeah. I'm not... Uh... Go ahead. You can go over there. So we're going over there yes. to draw. You can go over okay. there. Wait, do you have to draw? F it's four games. So I guess we only no, do no. the final Dr game. Draw a summary. Draw a summary. Okay. This is great. Um, I love how I'm getting pulled into this. <laughs> So, okay, so the tools we have, uh, we have freehand, you know, you can just do like whatever. Okay. Okay. We have one, if you ever need this for whatever reason, you probably don't. Uh, this is an arrow, okay? Here's a circle. So you can do like a really, uh, you can do like this and then like a smile. There you go. It could be you. Okay. As an example. Yeah. Um. Your turn to draw something. Okay, is it on a normal one now? Uh, it is so. on a uh, normal freehand, yes. You can just draw. So, do you want to keep the face or do we kill it? I mean, maybe kill it because all right, if all you right. do it like Xerxes, he usually has 
both the logo, so maybe there's like a Splice logo here. Okay, okay. Uh, I'll just make like a nest. This is a snake. Yeah. And... Yes, we need the SK logo. SK. Then. <laughs> so I just type S. Yellow SK. K. Yeah. There we go. And then, obviously, it's me playing, so... I need some champions. Let me just do this. And some... That's a three, by the way. Three, one. There we go. Nice. <laughs> and then he usually writes the scores as well and draws the champions, but... Scores right there. Yeah, but like um, for every single game and KDA and stuff. Uh, oh, no. But that, that takes too long. Um, you got to draw Vayne now. Draw Vayne. Um, that's going to be interesting, but basically... Uh -huh, like uh -huh, two this. legs. Yeah. And uh, yeah. that here. That's your face? Oh, uh, yeah. Some long hair. Or actually, it's not that long. And okay, okay. And then... Uh, I'm not sure how we... This needs to like go really small into detail, uh -huh. but basically like oh, I put the this little. Now. That's that's nice. This thing. Um, what was my KDA? It was one million uh, or something. Yeah. Let's just say one hundred. One hundred. And then I'm doing a sad phase over here because SK lost. There. <laughs> oh yeah, we can draw like this is. How's? how's I mean, I, I didn't even build Infinity Edge in the game, <laughs> but oh, direct side. It's like uh, I don't know. It's like a sword that goes up. Yeah, right. Like this, <laughs> and then and then you do like. <laughs> oh, whoa, 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 whoa! Let's not do anything. Anymore. <laughs> All right, everyone ignore uh, this just part the over back here. Back a bit here. Yeah, this this doesn't. This is an infinity edge. Okay, uh, 100 KDA, and he usually writes if he's the MVP as well. Uh, it's actually 10 to 8, but you already wrote 100. And if we clear the screen, we kill everything. So that would ruin everything. So now it's 100 KDA. Yeah, that's an M. Ooh. There we go. That's more, I mean, it has to be enough. Again, this is Infinity Edge, just so everyone knows. <laughs> I was really going out of the wrong path yeah. here. I'll leave this on. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you so much, Kavi, for doing that. I didn't like, uh, uh, I'm not going to draw Cyan Vilkas too. That's a bit no, too hard, I think. I think that's difficult. This is extremely entertaining. I bet Xerxes wishes he was on the show now. I think Kavi did a much better job than I did. Uh, the vein <laughs> was very nice. I love how you immediately thought back to some moments with Kobe on the Telestrator and you were like... That's the thing with the Infinity Edge through. and the handle and then the, the top part of the sword. Yeah, I was like, this could go really wrong. Yeah. So uh, it ended up being that. Yeah, I like it. But uh, the unhappy face surely was good enough. Yeah, the unhappy face was fantastic. Um, I think that wraps up the series also for us. Um, so now that we've seen the first round, it's hard because you used to be like an unbiased analyst, so I could just ask you a general question. I'm still going to do it. Uh, have your expectations as for who will get in the final changed by what you've seen this weekend? Um, not really. I mean, again, Fnatic played the exact same way as, as they did in regular season. So I think if, if you believe they were going to make the final based on regular season, then yesterday's game just didn't really change that mm -hmm. for you. Um, Obviously, the Spice SK series was a little bit closer. Um, and I think maybe if you compare how convincing the wins were between Fnatic Vitality and Spice SK, you would again stick to Fnatic right there. But Vitality also really did kind of fall apart. So I'm just actually right now extremely excited to watch uh, the Spice Fnatic game to see if Spice can prove everyone wrong uh, once again. And if they do manage to beat Fnatic there, I think honestly nothing stops them uh, from going to the final where they can face OG. How big is the belief that you guys can make the run to the final, to the trophy? Mm, I mean... Is it bigger than previous years? Let me put it that way. I think so. I think right now we're playing better and we have a higher ceiling as well than in previous lineups. And just how we've evolved and how we're playing, I feel like it's much better compared to last year where we got third place, but as a team, I feel like we weren't nearly as good as we are now. And I just really hope we can show it in more than like one game in a best of five. There. Why are you guys better than last year with this lineup? Because I think a lot of people on paper were obviously a little bit concerned with Niski not being on, you know, Mickey as well. Well, the secret is that it has to look worse on paper. To okay. Get higher. That's like the opposite of Misfits, right? Interesting. <laughs> that's, that's a good strategy. Mm -hmm. Well, Great strategy. successful. Uh, so we'll check in with you, of course, next week. The best of luck for uh, that best of five versus Fnatic. We're also going to take a look at some Alienware big plays as we close out our first week of playoffs in the LEC. First up, yesterday, Buipo, he got camped by Vitality, but still managed to pull off some fancy moves on Gangplank. As the Pirate says himself, Mercy sank with my ship.
go back to the physical damage as Cabo just nukes it. Yeah, trying to extend that trade, uses the cutlass for the slow, a few more autos, wants to get forward. Ooh, oh, buying a bit more time, but we'll playing that one so oh, well! No, no, oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, man, baited, outsmarted, so well played. It was such Round a bait, two. but here comes Mowgli, here comes Jack Joel, and the rest of Vitality. Flashing forward, Mowgli's just gonna move in, he should just be able to take this one now. Wait, Blippo's still alive! Wait, what? Blippo, Jack Joel? I'm, so, I'm sorry. What? What? I'm sorry. No way. I'm sorry. No way. I got TP though, but Ali have a room without TP. I can stay by the way and go behind him, but I think there is a wall here. So. I hold him. Might be dead. Might not. Might he's heal. dead. He's dead. Yo, Ali at top. Yeah, top right as well. Um, Should I TP? <laughs> Holy shit! I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, the definition of tilt. That is the replay you get, then, because that is so annoying. Very annoying. Uh, that's very true. So basically, Kabi, you know, you gotta tell Duke and everyone just, you can't go top ever because that's gonna happen apparently. I mean, yeah, I guess just go bot instead. <laughs> just go <laughs> bot, bot instead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, in the same series, we also got our very first look at the reworked Kale. Spoilers: she is pretty OP in the right hands. Vitality had no idea what hit them as Fnatic's nemesis completely took over the game. Jackal's really trying to catch him. Yeah, desperately running for but there's not a lot of damage here. Nemesis is going to cut through him, but the ultimate now coming in. We'll be able to finish it off with the help of Jinx, but it's a one-for-one -one trade. Combo's in the corner, that's a very strong KO. It does get taken down. Nemesis on the edge of death. He's going to manage to live. He's been in the Attila flashes forward, wants the reset, takes a lot of damage, though. Out comes the ultimate. Bye to Attila. They take down. Nemesis on the edge of death. He's going to manage to live. He's been in the Do you need help? I think they need help. Okay, I have here for you if you come to me. And oh my, well, look, look, he's literally on the Nexus 1v3. He does not care. Oh, comes in, he's just going to keep it going. Does he get the chance to use the what? ultimate as well? He does, that's the double kill. Wants a few more. They're walking right into the fountain. They just keep beating him. That's the Quadra. Is he going to get the Penta? <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm going. They're going. They're descending, I guess. Let's go help kill. Hey. Penta, 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 Penta. Go, 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 Blows. Really blows what are you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, do it again. Do your little whip. That again? What is that? Stand aside. What is he doing? Is he Ivern? Is something coming in? Okay, let's start jungler, position. Jungler? Mm, mm, jungler? Mm. Top laner. On your back. Kale? Kale? No. Kale. Oh, you got it. Yeah, you got it. You got it. What, you got it. what is this? So, was to do it. <laughs> so if you haven't been watching, ready check. Oh you my god! And that is the uh, issue. How would kale. you guys do kale? I tried to do First like off, melee wings, range. Yeah, yeah. I, I should have started with wings. Obviously, that would have been way easier. Also, like the that movement. I tried to do the. I'm in melee range, so I was like doing this, and then I'm now I'm ranged. You know, doing this. I yo. Oh my god! I wonder what you look like when you're like dancing to disco music. There's probably something. a reason I'm not dancing a whole lot. Uh, yeah. Also, what I also found really cool is that Nemesis was just it, like comparison to Caps. Nemesis is so cold blooded. He's like, True. Oh, yeah, Penta. I think Whatever. he might have ruined a couple of rank games uh, after this because people saw the. Pentakill, and they're yeah. like, okay, obviously you gotta pick kill no matter what but because she's that very strong. strong though. Yes, I just want to say that at 17 minutes he was 505, so he already had like two and a half items. I'm not saying anything away from the Penta, just saying Kale itself will not always do that. At like 20 minutes, he had 12 or 13 kills after that Pentakill, so he was very, very, very fit. Normally it takes Kill a lot of time to get to that point. Uh, but yeah, if you get there early, you will do that. Yeah, so Kabi, if they pick it, just don't give him five kills. Yeah, I my solo queue kills look a bit different. Because yeah. everyone tilts there and then <laughs> you'll just FF be before you're level 16. So. Then you never get there. Yeah, you never get there. Okay, final um, replay when it comes down, or when it came down to it rather, in game four, Splice and Kabi pulled off some massive team fights to win the series. Let's take another look. Actually, Pity is gonna jump in the face. Cool comes out. SK won the fight. Splice, the front line is charged. He's humanoid him from the side. There's the glacial prison. Cersei caught out by Whirl Whirlim. Oh, it's all on Kobe. Watch the AD carries here. Kobe steps forward into the hero's entrance. Knocked up. And look at the damage coming out from SK. That rune answer from Crown Shot's doing absolute work. Chachi takes oh. one. We have a little stutter game. As Kobe's still on the front line, he gets one. Can Kobe's Kobe alive. do it? He's still alive. He gets self made. He gets 
Empyrean somehow, Cobby, managed to survive and takes down two. Empyrean and Whirlup have to run for the wind. Baron buff is the ultimate equalizer when it comes to 1v1 matchups inside. Oh, Crown shot. shot! Straight into the GA. The Unleashed Power is just too much damage. Dream Sports away as well. Empyrean opened up on by Kobe here. Dreams gets the Justice Punch in self made just way too late before he even joins the party. We'll pop the Void Rush, but shut down onto Crown Shot. Shut down onto Dreams. SK's hopes in this game are being shut down by Splice. Cool little fist bump to Norse Garen. Must be cool for him because this is his first playoffs, as far as I know, for Norse uh, No, he's been... Uh, Rocket, right? Rocket. Oh, it wasn't Rocket. He got 3-0 oh, by yeah, Splice, yeah. actually. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, how was it now winning with him? Because I, we always see him as a super excitable guy. I think he was pretty calm today compared to what he normally is. Yeah. Um, not sure why, but I still think he played pretty well. And obviously I remind him of that series sometimes, just to make a bit <laughs> mm. of fun. But I think he's doing really well. He's a good player. Yeah, I agree. I think actually both supports had a fantastic day. Fancy watch as well he's wearing there. Yeah, he's wearing a Rolex, I think. Am I supposed to say that? I don't know. Anyway, uh, that'll be it from us because honestly, between the drawing and whatever we've been talking about, it's been a long day, but it's been great. But there is more League of Legends because across the Atlantic, the LCS playoffs is now well underway with FlyQuest versus Golden Guardians. And then after the last game over there, you can also check out our rebroadcast of Splice versus SK. Now, we'll be back next week, Friday, for Fnatic versus Splice and then Saturday for G2 versus OG. We already can't wait. Well, you have to wait just a week. Thank you very much for watching this weekend, and we'll see you next week for more LEC playoffs. Goodbye. People just don't like Splice. They're so boring, they don't do anything. But we're never bad. We're always really close to actually making it. We are just done being an underdog, and out of the four teams uh, playing this weekend, I think we are the strongest one. Well, it is proving that there's a chance to come. Here we go. Oh, going to force the four before the charm comes out. They root up on his dreams. Crash up, jumps across the wall, over here comes Pyrian. Baby on death will knock him back as that he locks him up. And in a game of inches, it looks like SK are the ones to strike first. The shutdown comes out from Krauschop, and they were an inch away from losing, but SK take game one. What keeps me going is my own skill, that I know that in the right situation I'm able to win everything. Tommy comes in from the side, the blade puller pulls it back, it's a triple for Tommy! He gets popped into his GA, the second Nexus Tower will fall, and Splice will strike back and tie us up at one and one. He's on the inhibitor already, here he goes, Humanoid jumps into the middle of the Mordering of Frost, they're on Superior, but he shuffles them back with the soldiers. Organic destruction from Tommy, as they take down one, and they're just gonna clean them all up. And after an impeccable early game, an impeccable mid game splice a one game away from winning this round of flaps. Well, uh, Ooh, oh, no, wait, that's level one it. flash. Oh, he has no flash. With a torn, he's got no flash. And this, 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 and